Hi, I'm Isabel Glidden, and I'm going to be talking about Anthony Braxton. Anthony Braxton is an American composer and musician that was popular in the 60s, but it still remains popular today. He played the clarinet, flute, and the piano, but is most notably known for playing the saxophone. He grew up in Chicago and remained there, and ended up studying at the Chicago School of Music and also attended Roosevelt University. He became inspired by Schoenberg while playing with the U.S. Army bands and even annoyed his friends with his free jazz playing. After the Army, he returned to the U.S. and ended up becoming a part of some trios and quartets and would even travel to Paris to perform. Some contributions to society and jazz in general from Braxton are that he actually faced a lot of racism because he did not want to be labeled as a jazz musician. He actually composed classical and chamber music and even became a band leader of his own, leading some trios and quartets. Some notable quartet players that he had include Kenny Wheeler, who played the trumpet, bassist Dave Holland, and drummer Barry Altschool. Braxton adapted ghost trance music, which was inspired by a Native American ritual, where he would blend together different styles of playing, which he described as being a melody that never ends. This style allowed him to show off all different aspects of his playing and showed how well-rounded of a talent he is. He's also most noted for releasing the first album of unaccompanied saxophone solos, which he would perform live at his concerts as well. He was not the first person or musician to perform these unaccompanied solos, but he is the first person to release an entire album of them. He ends up going on to release more than 100 albums and even writes five operas. He joined the Association of Advancement for Creative Minds, which is a group of African-American musicians located around the south side of Chicago, and they formed together because they weren't conforming to the idea of only playing jazz music as African-American musicians. A couple notable, notable members of this group include Leo Smith, Roscoe Mitchell, and Muhal Richard Abrams. At this time, Braxton started to gain some popularity, but he faced some backlash from the members of the AACM because he was interested in more than just African music. He actually was inspired and interested in European, Asian, and African music. He ends up forming the Tricentric Foundation, which is a non-for-profit organization that supports his work and the work of other musicians like him who don't necessarily fit the mold. The members of this group perform his works and keep an archive of all of his works today. He also taught as, at Wesleyan University for over two decades where he was able to influence young musicians to go beyond the mold and create whatever they wanted to create. His musical style is that he's known for playing free jazz, where he would improvise solos with his different instruments. An example of this is the album For Alto, which is that accompanied, unaccompanied saxophone solo album, where he wouldn't follow a harmonic structure, and instead he just performed the solos throughout the album, changing from song to song. He's a very avant-garde musician. He even would name some of his pieces and albums with diagrams and equations instead of worded titles, and his freestyle also allowed him to have artistic um, freedom, and it's kind of hard to describe free jazz just because it's not like swing era jazz or bebop that has that notable qualities. Instead, the musician is able to adapt and change with that song and how the song goes, how it flows, and even the solos throughout the song. I'm glad that I picked Braxton to learn about because even though it was the 60s and at that time a lot of racism was going on and people wanted to put him in specific mold, he actually said that his music is like his life where it just flows between classical and jazz and he just plays what he wants to. And it showed that even though they wanted to label him, he was able to move beyond that and create his own style. His operas his classical music and his chamber music and the jazz that he performed are all still listened to today and he's still composing different pieces and because he still remains popular today I think it shows that it was important that at the time he strived to be the person that broke the mold and reached out and created what he wanted and it showed that African Americans at the time didn't have to only be jazz artists and they can move beyond that and create whatever they wanted.